One of the questions that I receive from CEREC users and non-CEREC users is, can you close margins with the CEREC? Now, even though we're using resin to bond in our CEREC's, I don't rely on a what I call a significant resin seam to close my gap. In other words, I want margins that would represent the integrity of a margin that you would need with a gold. I'm getting that with my CEREC. I want to share a few principles on how to do that. Number one, how you prepare. What do we mean by that? You want smooth preps, you want smooth line angles, you want very crisp margins. I finish my margins, particularly the cable surface margin on the occlusal surface with a red diamond, number one. Number two is the reflective medium that I use. I want to be very thin. I accomplish that best with some of these new reflective mediums, such as contrast spray by Aviclair, Optic spray by Serona, and my favorite is the Vita spray. It's in a can, it's similar to a varnish. It's very, very, very thin. You can see we apply it very fast. So when you take your optical impression, the secret is when you prepare, which is your, that's, you're an engineer. In other words, the architecture of your ceramic is determined by how you prepare. So the preparation becomes very important. And knowing this fact that with all ceramic dentistry, the strength and longevity of the ceramic is highly dependent on the smoothness of the internal surface of your ceramic. So the way you accomplish that is how you prepare. When you're taking your optical impression, you don't want to pitch and roll. So I start distal and I move the camera to the anterior component of the mouth. I'm not pitching and rolling. So therefore, if I'm doing multiple teeth, I make sure they all have the same optical path of insertion. Another way I close my margins is I increase my marginal thickness parameter. For instance, on veneers, I'll increase it to 100 microns. If I'm working with really thin margins using Emacs, I may increase that up to 150 microns. So when it mills, I get a little extra bulk at the margin. Then I will take a ceramic polishing well which is either a Meisinger or I'll use the Brazzler and I'll polish back that extra little lip and that creates a knife edge margin, just like a razor blade. And it's not serrated and with that I'll have margins like gold. So I can get good margins if you know how to do it. If you're pressing a ceramic at a laboratory and it's fairly thin, that wax is over contoured so when it's pressed you get a nice clean margins and then it's polished back. We do the same thing with our CAD CAM mills. And with that, I get really closed margins. So if you pay attention to the details and you're diligent, in other words, you do it the same way every time, stay really systematic and stay simple with your preps. Don't get complex with all these little boxes. You want smooth internal line angles. In fact, I don't like a lot of boxes because boxes create sharp, corners on the internal component of the prep. Therefore, you'll have sharp corners on the internal component of your ceramic, which can eventually create what we call a cumulative load damage. And that's when a, when a ceramic could break on you. So uh, just pay attention to the engineering properties of ceramics and understand how they perform can give us restorations that are predictable and should last a long time. Mm -hmm.